Hi everybody, nice to have you with me today. Today we've got a bit of a treat. Um, I'm gonna, well not interview, we're gonna have a nice chat with Jack. Jack runs yeah. JBS and Jack manages all, uh, all of my properties now. Some are done on a tenant find and uh, all my HMAs are done on fill the manage. Woohoo! <laughs> Which means I'm going to Thailand for six weeks. But what's quite interesting, even for me and I've been working, I've been managing my own properties for 15 years is, is kind of the professionalism. I mean, he's, he's cranked it up a notch and it's really interesting to observe my end. So we're doing a series of videos for you guys so that you can really understand the relationship between landlord and, and letting agent and also the professionalism that you wanna be approaching your property portfolio with, even if you decide not to use a letting agent. But if you are in Bristol, I massively recommend JBS and we'll give you their website at the end. Today's question is, what can you charge tenants? Because I think that's what people ask you a lot, isn't it? Yeah, so we get, um, I mean, ever since the, um, the tenant fee ban in um, 2019, yeah. um, there's, well, that was first of all, yeah, it was a cap on agents charging tenants fees. Yes. Uh, but then it was also a cap on actually what you can charge your tenants. Um, so um, that then led on to like the permitted payments. So obviously rent was a permitted payment, luckily. Phew! Yeah, so okay, yeah, there was there was rent rent that was permitted, and then uh, originally actually on the first draft they didn't include the utilities on that, so I had to redraft it. So okay. actually all of the utilities, council tax, that was yeah, any any, any kind of bills yes. that was a permitted payment that tenants could pay for actually living there. Ah, so if you um, if you charged all inclusive. Um, so, so, so yeah, you, you, you can you can charge on all include that all inclusive. However, um, that, yeah, that's that's as part of the rental payments. Right. Um, however, the, 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 the things that most landlords ask us about, it might be things like gardeners, fish yeah. tank cleaning, yeah, fish chimney, tank cleaning. <laughs> chimney what? sweeping. We had, it was what one flat we had in Clifton a couple of years ago, and it had this lovely fish tank. The look from the bedroom into the lounge, you could see oh, through wow. it, which was it, it, it was amazing. Right. But then obviously there was a cheap uh, a cleaning charge that had to keep on. Yeah, there was a lovely fish. tropical fish in, um, and um, with that, if if there's any additional payments for like gardeners, maybe it's like twenty, even if it's like twenty thirty pounds a month. Yeah. That needs to be factored into the rental. Got you. So. Um, yeah, if you're, you know, rent five hundred pounds, you'd have to factor in if you want to add an extra fifty. You okay. know, it's going to be fifty quid. Yeah. Put it up to five fifty. Gotcha. Um, it's so a, you can't charge for fish tank cleaning. No. You can't charge for gardening as a separate. No, thing. it needs to be gotcha. all clumped into one. I've never, um, I've never supplied fish yet. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, and I guess you know, on, on one, one, the probably the most sort of common topic being uh, like you know, rents for pets. Yeah. Um, so if people have pets, typically before the tenant fee ban, you might ask for a higher deposit. Yes. But that's now capped at five weeks. Yes. So you can't take any. So I mean, that, I mean, that's where some of the sort of stigma around some landlords accepting pets comes from, because actually, there's there, there can be it can be viewed as actually there's no incentive. You can't take a higher deposit. Yeah, why why would why would they then accept someone with a dog or a cat versus someone who doesn't? Well that's true. Um, On a practical note, that actually is true. Yeah. My experience, um so in our contract, and I want to ask you about that, but mm. shortly, let's do all the fees first. Yeah. In my contracts it says no pets unless mm. given express permission. Um and I've had people keep pets uh, without permission. They've wrecked the carpets. Now they've wrecked an entire house worth of carpets, mm. and their deposit doesn't cover the carpets. Yeah, I mean, there's. Um, I mean, I, I, I mean, we, we have an office dog and everything, so we are oh, right. yep. fairly pet positive friendly. to pet. But that, yes. again, that's another conversation in terms of actually which houses are suited for pets. Yes. Um, but the thing is, if you if we have tenants that want to get a pet in their property, yeah. um, we would typically charge them well, basically an increase of rental. Yes. So rather than paying you know, a higher deposit, which they can't do, yeah. you can increase the rental accordingly to factor in wear and tear, cleaning yeah. at the end of the tenancy, that yes. kind of stuff. Gotcha. Um, so there are ways around it, but just to keep on the right side of the law, make sure you're adding it as the rental payment rather than a separate payment, because so, that can then come back to you. What else can you not charge for? Um, well, I mean, as long as it's included in the rental, right. you can charge 
for pretty much anything, as long as that's agreed between both parties. And it's in the contract. You could add in, I don't know, a baking class or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. As long as it was, as long as both a parties. A wine drinking class. This yeah. is wine that Jack's brought back from his um, father-in-law's vineyard. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm featuring it in every video. Yeah. <laughs> Just having a little pop-up um, moment. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, but basically as long as it's included within the rental and it's agreed by both parties, any additional services is acceptable. You're right. However, you can't then say, oh, you need to pay for the gardener, that's £30 a month. Got you. So the way I manage mine is um, they pay for all of the bills. Mm -hmm. So I don't pay for any, any of their bills and that's separate. But you could have bills within the rent. But you can do. Um, I wouldn't advise it. No. Um, especially with the prices increasing now. Yes. Um, but um, and my general, not always. Most mm. of my tenants have always been super, but there's always been a small percentage. What I generally found, and it used to really annoy me, was you'd go to the house, the heating would be on full volume, and all the windows would be open, mm -hmm. and you'd be going, "What are you doing?" Yeah. And they'd be like, "It wasn't me," and you think you're the only person in the house. Yeah. Um, but so so I just saw my money being burnt. You know, like. Yeah. Um, what about lost keys? Um, so you can charge appropriately for that. So whether that's um, if if they've, I mean, you could you could technically a uh, locksmith would obviously they're going to charge a lot of money to yes. come and let them in. However, that would be a reasonable fee if you were unable to you know drop them a set of keys, which you know at maybe midnight or one o'clock. It's like. That's kind of like their own responsibility to look after their keys. Yeah. If they've lost those keys, it's their responsibility then to replace them. Yes. And I think it would be unfair to expect the landlord to come down and meet them at 12, 1 o'clock. Gotcha. Whereas then they should just call a locksmith. Yeah. And gotcha. you can't charge any extra on Charlie Tech. You can charge for like replacement of keys. Yeah. So um, typically they can usually get in one way or another through like another housemate or something. Yes. Yeah, sure. um, or their partner. But um, you can charge for the direct replacements of the keys, um, and you can, as long as you can prove that it's cost you money in your time, okay. then you can charge for that. But yeah. again, I think um, as long as it's kind of reasonably uh, documented yeah. and it's an appropriate charge, then that would be. Now, I may be going down a rabbit hole here, but mm. all of my houses are on master key systems, mm -hmm. and I have only a couple of times had somebody put out a locksmith and change the front door. And it's mm. like, well, you're gonna have to pay for it going back. Because they've they've paid for a locksmith, mm. but now, they've now screwed up the master key system. Yeah. Is that appropriate? Um, so, I mean, that would, that would then go back to really the inventory yeah. in terms of if it's documented on there as one lock, yeah. they, they need to put it like for like. They couldn't then, it happens a lot of the time, tenants will try and replace something, cut some corners. Yes do something that's cheaper and yes. not as good standard and then yeah they need to put it right so that you know like for like you gotcha. don't expect anything less gotcha um, and then what happens um and you have it don't you particularly like with shared houses or, or like student houses where one tenant's like i need to move out mm -hmm. you know halfway through um i think um, wells road i had yeah. a little email from tenants going two of us are not speaking to three of us and i yeah. was like oh Sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes yeah. relationships don't work out. Yeah. Um, what what can you charge for? Um, them? So uh, if it's um, uh, for example for an HMO, um, you would then conduct a tenant swap. Yeah. And um, the tenant swap you can only charge a tenant fifty pounds. Okay. So that is that is like the absolute max. And bearing in mind the tenants, the amount of paperwork that's that has been, the amount is of paperwork, basically a new let. It's not a fifty quid so, job. Yeah, it's, it is. I mean, I don't know where they pulled the fifty pound fee from. Uh, um, the ether. But, um, that's it's not a fifty quid <laughs> job. It's, uh, there's a huge amount of work involved in that, and it's kind of they they, they, they can only pay fifty pounds. However, imagine if you had a smaller unit, like a one or a yeah. two bedroom flat. Yeah. And yeah, imagine both both parties wanted to leave. Yeah. This would be the same if actually all all of the tenants of an HMO wanted to leave as well. Yeah. You could then charge them the reasonable cost of reletting it. Gotcha. So if if, oh, if, if a tenant was gonna leave from like you know, a smaller unit, like a one or a two bed, and for example they had still six months left on their tenancy, 
you would say that you're you're very much liable for the rent up yep. until the day that the new tenant moves in, yep. and you're going to cover the cost of the landlord's reletting costs. Which would be what? That's so it'd be like our fine tenant fee. Yeah. Um, so um, because that's that's a reasonable cost. That's that's a cost that the landlord would have you know incurred. It's kind of you know, it's, it's documented very well. Gotcha. There's a, you know, a very I set understand. list of exactly what is included within that. Gotcha. But for some reason, it's just fifty pounds return swap, which, which is, is awful. Yeah. <laughs> we, we got done on yeah. that one. Yeah. Anything else you think is useful for this discussion? Um, on what what um, fees or oh, um, and is there anything that's a bugbear for you? you think oh, we should be able to charge that no, um, because that's appropriate. I always thought mm. the, the paperwork one was a bit unfair. I mean, for me, it's, it's I mean, that, that is like the worst thing for us when <laughs> we get like a tenant swap come in because it's not just, it's uh, all, all the extra admin paperwork, but then it's also uh, outgoing checkout, then and, you know, updating the inventory. So you've got the checkout, the inventory. Yes. You then got to make sure that all the other tenants are happy with that person and coming they've in. Documentation. Yeah, so it's it's just it's incredibly labour intensive. <laughs> okay, now I need to fess up yeah. on film. So um just as we were handing over um Birch Road, do you remember one of the tenants wanted mm. to move out? And Jack emailed me quite correctly to say, Do you want to deal with it or do you want us to deal with it? And I went yeah. You please. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Well, I hope that's been super useful. You know, what fees um, can you charge your tenants what, um, to stay within correctly and appropriately as a good quality landlord within the law, but also what's fair and appropriate. Um, so I'm Susanna Cole. Remember to go to my website, thegoodpropertycompany.co.uk. I've got loads of great stuff for you to download, for you, academies for you to join. I've got on-demand webinars. Uh, sometimes, it like, depends where I am in the country, I do live webinars. But if you are looking for a letting agent in Bristol... Yeah, so it's um, JBS Bristol is the company name. My name is Jack and the website is jbsbristol.co.uk. There you go. There you go. Huge recommendation yeah. on my end. Great. Good luck to you. If what we've put out for you guys really works for you, then fabulous. Support our channel, click the like button and thank you so much.